get along. Stop I really do. Now. What, here? Now. Good. This is a good place to stop. Tonight you sleep in hell. There can be only one! The iconic, ironic statement that kicked off a 20-year franchise in 1986. Highlander was never expected to be a success, and Fox didn't really know what to do with it or evidently how to market a cheesy movie about an immortal Scottish guy sword fighting and chopping heads. But across the pond, where the inherent awesomeness of the concept was immediately appreciated, it fared much better and eventually came back around in a big way by gaining a foothold in the home video market, securing a place as a cult classic, and acting as a springboard for a lot of ridiculous shit. Iraq, tell Asclepios to prepare the Room of Oblivion. Highlander is... stunning. Seriously, under the helm of prolific music video director Russell Mulcahy, if you released it untouched today, it would still look ahead of the curve. The visual language is so opulent and heavy-handed it almost doesn't matter what the story is, but miraculously that decadent eye candy is exactly what the ridiculous pulpy plot needed. Highlander was not about intimacy or subtlety. Spanning centuries from the battlefields of Scotland to the visceral dank of back alley New York, it was about a camera sweeping over climactic sword fights set to Queen songs. Quick recap on Highlander, since the reason the second movie is so reviled has a lot to do with how it treated the first one. Highlander is about a mysterious race of immortals who can only die from decapitation, which means they all carry swords and pray they don't run into the master of the the flying guillotine. Every time one immortal kills another, the victor gains the knowledge and power of the deceased in a ritual called the quickening. At an unspecified time, the gathering will begin, when the immortals will be drawn to each other for a final clash until only one remains. He or she will claim the prize, an unspecified but enormous power that could spell doom for humanity in the wrong hands. In 16th century Scotland, Connor MacLeod discovers he is one of these immortals, and is taken under the wing of Ramirez, who explains the concept of the quickening, the gathering, and the prize. In 1980s New York, the time of the gathering approaches, and the players are whittled down to Connor and the Kurgan, a barbaric immortal who killed Ramirez. McLeod kills the Kurgan, becomes the last immortal, and claims the prize. The end! Question mark? No, pretty solidly, period. But Highlander eventually picked up enough steam for the producers to be approached about a second movie. The result has become an archetype example of terrible sequel etiquette, not to mention a pretty universal worst movie ever. It stomped all over the continuity of Highlander, way more than was actually necessary to sidestep the definitive ending. It took the Highlander concept and hurled it scattershot in 12 directions, and having violently torn itself away from the original, it proceeded to backpedal in elements of fan service anyway. The production was shaky, the Argentinian locations and crew were proving way more trouble than they were worth, and eventually the paranoid bond company all but took over the production to complete the movie in a way the director disowned. All of which provides a tempting but ultimately false excuse. The absurd elements of discontinuity and retconning were never symptomatic, they were the bedrock of the project. The whole idea, the whole genesis, the whole concept, the whole fact of its existence is wrong. The Argentinian problems and Bond and company are old news. But what my own research has unearthed is that Highlander 2 was actually ghost-written. Gregory Wyden, Peter Bellwood, and Larry Ferguson are the pseudonym triumvirate of Timmy. Just Timmy, whose thankless toil on the screenplay netted him only a brief cameo. You're a little one, aren't you? Oh. <sighs> Bet you've always wanted to drive one of these, huh? Me too. But that means he was desperate enough to talk about Highlander 2 with me. Timmy's mom said he could come try to explain his screenplay if he finished all his homework. He didn't, but he came anyway, because Timmy's hard like that. He's also still 12. Say hi, Timmy. Pokemon! Let's talk Highlander 2. We go from the contrasting finality of McCloud's defeat of the Kurgan with the vagary of the prize itself to... McCloud and a team of scientists using a laser to make a shield around the Earth to protect it from global warming in the far-flung future of 1999. We had homework to make an idea to stop global warming. I did a shield and teacher was, said it was stupid, so I was like, I'll show you. Go on. Well, then it's 25 years after the shield, and everything sucks, and everyone fights each other, and evil corporations rule the world, and it's super badass, and Connor is like this lame old guy, and Ramirez goes Jedi voice is like, Remember Highlander. A bunch, and that's when McCloud remembers he's actually a- An alien from another galaxy. Yeah. Timmy, what the hell? That is so completely out of left field stupid. Nuh uh, because when my friends and I watched Highlander, we were like, if there are these immortal people, where do they come from? They never say that's stupid. No, that's intentional ambiguity to lend a sense of mythic permanence to them. This is replacing superstition and folktales apropos of the 16th century origins of the story with bargain bin sci fi. Honestly, it's like you weren't even trying to make any of the pieces from the first movie fit. We hereby sentence you to exile from Zeist. 
You will be sent to the planet Earth. Once there, you will be immortal. You can only die if your head is cut from your body. When one of you becomes the last of us on Earth, priests, he will claim the prize. He can return to Zeist or choose to grow old and die on Earth. Well, maybe they should have been aliens in the first movie. How is that my fault? Okay, so in your version, McCloud and Ramirez were exiled to Earth. McCloud just forgot for hundreds of years, and then Ramirez's ghost voice randomly reminds him, and now evil alien General Katana all of a sudden decides he needs to kill them, like, right now. Yeah, because he's bad. I knew people asked that dumb question. That's why I put this in there. But I thought you said McCloud was mortal and can never return. Find him for me. Kill him. Yeah, that clears things right up. So instead of going himself, Katana sends two porcupines to Earth to kill old man McCloud. But then I thought I didn't want him to be old anymore, because old people are boring and smell bad. So when he kills one, he gets his quickening, and everything blows up super big and awesome. And he's not old anymore. And he gets on a hoverboard and fights a flying guy. So how many drafts of this thing did you do? What, you mean like spell check? I wish I put more hoverboards in this movie. And then Ramirez, who got killed in 16th century Scotland, gets resurrected because McLeod says his name. Ramirez! Killing Ramirez in the first one was so stupid. It's way more awesome if him and McLeod are like, um... Tango and Cash? Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. This. And I see you've added in a whole segue here with Ramirez getting fitted for a suit. Were you just shy of feature length or something? Oh, that wasn't me. That was Sean Connery's contract. It was real specific. No one mystery put to rest. Meanwhile, McLeod and this random Louise person. Random, pointless Louise, who I guess is a freedom fighter trying to take down the shield, but she serves no actual purpose whatsoever. Like real girls. I was banished from the planet Zeist 500 years ago. I'm Louise Marcus from Flagstaff, Arizona. You got a lot of growing up to do, Timmy. It's funny though, this next scene here is like temporary self-awareness. Okay, now let me just see if I can get this straight. You come from another planet, and you're mortal there, but you're immortal here until you kill all the guys from there who have come here, and then you're mortal here. Unless you go back there, or some more guys from there come here, in which case you become immortal here, again. She's just saying what's going on in case it's too intellectual for people. That's why when Catan lands, I want to do something super evil and awesome. So he goes on a subway and crashes it with bitchin' music. <laughs> it's a narrative device, so you know he's a bad guy. That thing is quickening, huh? Ugh. Whatever, you're 12. What do you know about puns? So, then General Catan decides he's going to be part of the evil corporation that put up the shield. Why? Okay, wait, what, what is his M.O. here? Why, why is he on Earth? Why would he even care? Why would he want to be part of this? He was just there to kill McCloud for some reason. Holy crap, have you not been watching? He's evil. Evil people want to be in charge of corporations and get lots of money and girls and kill Christopher Lambert. That's what evil is. Do you ask why Jafar want to kill Christopher Lambert? Why Darth Vader want to kill Christopher Lambert? Don't answer that. So Ramirez and McCloud go blow up the shield. I guess Louise comes too because they're supposed to be a girl. And then a big fan comes down. And Ramirez has to sacrifice himself. That's called emotional resonance. Will I ever see you again? Who knows, Highlander? Who knows? Bagpipes? Contract. Wait, the, the door is open. He could just run out with them. Why doesn't he just run out with them? Oh, and I have a movie with no emotional resonance. Now who's 12? So then McCloud gets in a wicked sweet sword fight with Katana, even though McCloud is using a Katana. It's called dramatic irony. And then he kills him and then walks into the laser. Yeah, a master control program there. And then McCloud and Louise smile at each other. And that's called subtext because they're going to do it. Yeah, wh why is she even in this movie? What is she there for? I don't know. What are girls for? Timmy, do you know why I do these reviews? Yeah, how's that working out for you? I gotta say, Timmy, I'm really siding with the masses on this one. I mean, I mean, what? Aliens? Post-apocalyptic future? Energy shield protecting Earth from global warming? Resurrecting Ramirez? How the hell many pixie sticks filled with cocaine were you on when you wrote this? Wait, when you review Calvin Fear 2, you said that when a movie doesn't in any way necessitate a sequel, but guess what anyway? You're, yeah, you're too young for that review. There's BJ's in it. You're a BJ. 
You said the best thing that could happen is for the sequel to just go ape shit. Yeah, you left ape shit in the dust. I wonder it wasn't all that good. Oh, thin ice, mister. No, it looked cool and it sounded cool, but the acting wasn't that good and I could have written it. The concept was super awesome. Immortal sword fighting for eternity till there's only one left is tit sweet. It is tit sweet. People say Highlander 2 sucks. Understatement. That it sucks is self-evident. They say that the very concept and creative core is the very antithesis of sequel etiquette. Did Highlander 3 suck? Yes! Why? Well, because it was pretty much just a carbon copy of the first one. Oh, yeah, cute, Timmy. I get it. Good movies don't get spin-offs and comic books and animated series and fan films. Good open-ended concepts do. But Highlander was all wrapped up with a bow on top. So what was left but what ifs? Yeah, there's a damn middle ground between carbon copy and post-apocalyptic aliens fighting global warming. Well, was that really a what if that needed answering? None of them need answering, but they're all valid. This is Highlander, not Schindler's List. It's a franchise that wants us to play, not think. There can be only fun. I would never make a pun that bad. You're acting like my script pee all over Highlander, but it was still the best way to go with a sequel. I tried new things, I didn't stifle myself behind established conventions, I threw a whole bunch of crap into a pot and cranked up the heat for better or worse. So you tell me, should I have written Highlander 3 instead? No. What about Endgame? What about The Source? What about the fact that there's never been a good Highlander sequel? The concept is timeless. The sequels suck. But which one do you hear about? Infamy doesn't mean it was good. No, it doesn't. But it does mean that it was the best. Alright, I'm gonna watch it one more time. Just to regroup my critical faculties, you understand? Not for the kick-ass hoverboard. I'll go get the pixie sticks! Oh, get them out of the pantry! The ones on the counter just have sugar in them.